Welcome to It's All Kicking Off, another football roundtable discussion podcast with myself, Adam Wilborn from What Culture Football, Simon Gallagher, and Tottenham Hotspur's very own Christian Eriksen. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I'd get in before the comments section. Yeah, well done. And it's going to become relevant in just a second. <laughs> uh, but don't forget, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Football on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily football podcasts. But I mentioned that you're uh, look-alike Christian Eriksen. Yes. Um, because we are here to discuss the disturbing truth about Tottenham Hotspur. Good title, that. Mm. Good title, that. See if the content lives up to it. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, because I have discovered... that You've discovered. Well, Reddit has, and yep, I've stolen good. it from there. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, that Tottenham Hotspur have only got 15 points from their last 15 Premier League games. That's relegation form. We're not going to possibly suggest relegation, but... It is relegation form. But uh, th- th- I suppose but that, nearly half a season. That's but, relegation. Yeah. What, what, so what, what other conversation do you have? Well, I, what I was going to say was uh, their, their Champions League antics towards the end of last season have clearly distracted from the fact that they've had a bit of a shocker, really. Are they, are they, are they in danger? Like, you, not necessarily of relegation, but of... You've touched upon the, oh, the, the big point with this. There's lots of little interesting ones. But the big point with this is they will say that it's a paper-thin squad, which, again, is nobody's fault but their own. They've spread it very finely. They kind of... Maybe took the eye off the league. Obviously, no chance of anybody else winning that last season mm-hmm. unless you were going to get 100 points. <laughs> um, they did well in the Champions League. Ultimately, did nothing in the Champions League. <laughs> like It was a fairly futile effort when you think about it. Liverpool were a side who won the day they could have beat. Didn't. It wasn't great. For it was them. absolutely dreadful final. Didn't really yeah. offer too much in the way of resistance. And then, as a result, they've got no Champions League to show for it. And now this really rotten run of form, which they've started this season... Not really quite able to shake. Like there was a good win against Villa, really good win against Villa. Um, great to get a point at uh, at Eastlands, as we're told it's uh, called by Do all the Manchester. Call it nowadays, I think it's what yeah. they like to, to be called. Like when we had, I when was we called were, the city of Manchester. Yeah, when we were the um, sports director reading, we were like, "Yes, I can Parks." I'm going to let um, Man City fans off with that. But I think everybody thought that the Newcastle game would be. Oh, there you go. Open Six the engine. Nil. Yeah, just get get in your stride. You've got the hard fall battle against the the unknown. Uh, promoted side, you've done, a re- you've done really well to get a point off City with two shots on target <laughs> <laughs> or two shots in the whole game. So there you are, there's the Newcastle game, and they just looked. Oh, I, I captain Harry Kane, I was furious. I also captain Harry Kane, yes. I think it was just a, it looked a fairly straightforward, even if you know, even if they didn't quite pick up three points, you thought good performance, it can play a bit more like they want to play, they can finally stretch the legs a bit. Um, and they looked really devoid of ideas. I mean, yeah. when you look at like Newcastle going to the third best team in the country, the Champions League finalists, and saying that they got a point, you expect that to be a real hang-on result. But the Spurs didn't have too many chances. Like There was a dubious penalty shout, and mm. that was, is it really? A couple of half chances here and there. There was a couple of fresh air shots. Maybe one or two times where they should have done better, but yeah. you wouldn't say that was a performance of a team that had been robbed of three points. No, yeah, Newcastle... Newcastle would have been happy going there, like you say, and nicking a point, and they got all three in the end. But yeah, so is this, I mean, you look at the results there. We, I've got them all printed out here, and you look towards the end of the season. I think you're right in terms of the fact that they probably took their eye off the ball. You see, I mean, look at the results after that Man City win. They they beat Brighton, but then they lose at home to West Ham. They mm. lose away at Bournemouth. Mm. You know, they draw against Everton. They, uh, and then, of course, there's the uh, Champions League final loss. Um, so, yeah, is this a, a, a signal of where they could possibly be heading this year? Because I think generally when we've talked about them in pre-season, they've sort of been the three automatically, that all three, well, all of us have put in the top four. Is that under threat? I don't think so, to be honest. It's a strange one from last season because it coincided with Harry Kane coming back into the team. Mm. So it was the exact game he came back was the Bournemouth game. Mm. And from there, it just didn't gel. Obviously, they had too many games, but they weren't in either of the domestic cups. So they didn't have that much of an uh, increased schedule. But you look at the start of last season, they won the first three games, and then they got beat by Watford. And mm. similar conversations were happening. Why did they just get beat by Watford when they, when they could beat other much better teams? No offense to Watford. No offense um, to Watford, who are bottom of the league. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Um, the worrying thing about it is the performance against Newcastle because it wasn't a good Newcastle performance apart from the 
defensive. It was solid. It was, re- you know, they weren't, mm. giving, they weren't giving Spurs anything, no. but aside of Tottenham's ability. The problem, I think, <laughs> and I don't know how much this applies to all these other games, you have to go through all the starting 11s, but and I'm going to regret bringing this up. It was the lack of Christian Eriksen for long, long parts of that game. Like, Eric Lamella is a fantastically exciting player. He can unlock defences, but he's not that he's not that player when you've no. got your sort of when the other team are they're entrenched in, they're sitting very deep. Lamella's not the player that's going to get you through those lines or get somebody else in around the back. He can, in a one-on-one moment, beat a player or he's capable of nice little moments here and there, but he's not going to do what an Ericsson can do in that situation. And I think the problem they've got is Ericsson's been there a long time now. He's been at Spurs for ages. I mean, Keegan tried to sign him for Newcastle. Did he? Two whole relegations ago. Course, yeah, he and he went, and he, went to, he went to Spurs instead because uh, mm. Ashley and, Chan- and Lashley and Lambayas thought he was too small. Yeah. Or something along those lines. <laughs> it's another story for, for another time. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of speculation about Christian Eriksen's future. Still, you know, the transfer deadline hasn't shut across Europe and he's been linked. And now, allegedly, I was reading today that, that, that negotiations may have sort of broken down between Daniel Levy and, uh, and Eriksen's agent. So... What's Spurs next are in massive trouble if Ericsson goes because he's while they've got for a side that doesn't apparently have a lot of depth, they always do tend to cope with injuries quite well. Certainly mm. a full back, they've had a lot of options over the years. Yeah. Centre back, we've seen Batongan sort of out of favour, and you've had a forty million pound defender that you can just bring in. Even when Harry Kane was injured, uh, Son was managed to find the goal soon. But I think that's Ericsson's that one player who no, they've got nobody else like it in the side. The, sy- the system is so inherently dependent on somebody who can do that job. And I just think maybe it's a bit of age, maybe it's a bit of malaise, maybe it's just a bit of just weariness. Like he's been at that side a long time, legs getting old. The game is getting slightly more intense, more of an em- emphasis on pressing and whatnot. And I just think Ericsson's effectiveness in that side is just not quite what it was maybe two or three seasons ago. And as a result, Spurs don't quite look as able to depend on him. There's one replacement for him, and unfortunately for them, it's Kevin De Bruyne. Like, he's he's the only one, uh, oh, when Ericsson was mm-hmm. completely on form, he's the only one who can compare to him. Purely in terms of stats as well, Christian Ericsson was the first name on everybody's fantasy football because he's just an asset maker, mm. assist maker, I should say. <laughs> I was like, well, well, yeah. I heard that before, that's really clever. <laughs> yeah, I've just made it up, yeah. Um, and and from I mean they've got good options. Deli Ali is a great player, but he's had, he's he's had, a, diff- he's had a difficult yeah. two seasons, though, hasn't mm-hmm. he? From that, yeah. like Ali's another one who's worth talking about because he exploded onto the scene sort of two seasons ago. And I, this isn't a criticism of him. When you look at his age and the amount of game time he's had, like he's you know, he's more than entitled to sort of regress a bit as a player, yeah. Yeah. not quite have that explosive impact. But they've struggled to get real big moments out of him the last season and a half or so. I think this is a, a big complaint a lot of Spurs fans have. He hasn't quite. He looked like he was going to be one of the best two or three players in all of Europe two seasons ago. And now he's he still looks like an excellent young player. He's still very young. Let's not forget, there's plenty of time for him to develop. But if Ericsson's not quite on it, and Kane's picking up an injury here and there or sort of drifting wider or receiving the ball from deeper positions and Ali isn't quite, you know, breaking through defences and doing all this, you start to look at that side and you're like, well, where does the... Where, where is this threat? Why is this a top three? Why is this a title challenging side? Yeah, if, if Lucas Moura doesn't score that last minute uh, goal against Ajax... Hmm. Do we are we looking completely differently at this Tottenham side then? I don't know if you're looking at it completely differently because even if he doesn't get that last minute goal against Ajax, it's still a relatively good season. They 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 won the league in as far in so far as it was possible for any other side to win the league. <laughs> yes. Like they came third, they had a good run in the Champions League. They beat Dortmund. They beat like a lot of good sides on the road at doing that. It's still a good side. It's still an excellent side who will have had a great season. But the, the people make the joke about them not winning anything as a result, and I just think. Pochettino himself has talked about a lack of intensity and a lack of togetherness and a lack of desire from this group of players as this season started. Like He routinely demands very high, intense sessions. He demands a lot from his players. And the whole reason for Tongan's in the side is because he didn't think he was putting enough effort in in pre-season. Like if you're not going to run about, you're not going to do what I tell you to do. You're not going to play at the levels we expect here. You're not going to play. And you just think... I know it's it's an e- it's a easy and boring point to make that they haven't won anything. But you look at some of the players on that side and where they could be playing their football, some of the sides they could move to, and you just think, has the heart in it this year? Like, can they be asked to like really run themselves into the ground, have another fifty game season, and come out of it a year older, but with again? Because realistically, they're not going to win the league. I was going to say, what no, should they focus so. on then? They're not going to win the league. They probably don't think they can maintain another Champions League run like that again. So is it FA Cup? Yeah, you'd think FA Cup, but. I mean, how many teams think they're within a realistic shot of winning the FA Cup this year? Seven or eight? 
Leicester certainly will. Everton certainly will. West Ham might. A few sides below might think if they get on a good run. Watford got all the way at the final. Man United. Man you probably need Man to win it Man as well. you That's need to. Chelsea it would be a great season for yeah, them. Yeah. Arsenal as well. But then they all look and think, well, <sighs> Liverpool and Man City are arsed with it. We're probably Man City's B team could probably yeah. win it. Yes. I just think if you're Tottenham, if you if you're sitting in that Tottenham dressing room and you think. We could be. Some of us could be at a Barcelona. Some of us get linked there. Some of us could be at a Real Madrid. Some of us could be at a Liverpool or a Man City. Do we want to run ourselves into the ground again and just like come out of it one year closer, one year less on your career, and still nothing to show for not, it? Not to go too much off topic, but is it? I mean, not quite fair because they have won La Liga. But is it fair to say sort of Atletico Madrid are the Tottenham of La Liga? Sort of, but Atletico with, do... With Trippier obviously going there. Atletico do kind of cycle through their players a lot quicker than Spurs. This this core Spurs side has been there for three, four seasons now. Yeah. Kane came into that side. Eriksen's been there for a long time. Yeah. Deli Ali moved from MK Dons about four seasons ago now, I think, maybe even longer. Vertonghen's been there a while. Alderweireld's been there a while. Rose, uh, Kyle Walker-Peters coming through the youth system. Lloris has been there for ages. That entire side, the most the notable core of it, recent... Signing is Sanchez, and that's about it. Yeah, really. Because they've got a couple of players on the players on the fringe who've not been there a while. They've probably got the hunger for it. But this side's been there a long time. Whereas Atletico, you see them cycle through these players quite a lot. The the hunger comes in. They bring through players who have either not achieved at a big club or on their way up, and they kind of use that as a good platform for them. And every now and then they look out. They get to a Champions League final, but they do win things. In Spain, I just I honestly think you look at that Spurs side. We always marvel at how they keep this team together. Yeah. But now it's. You, you imagine the conversations we had two or three seasons ago where Pochettino will have said, look, I think we can do something here. I really think we could be on the cusp of doing something. Let's stay here and build a side, not realising that Man City and Liverpool were about to assemble two of the greatest Premier yeah. League sides. It's unfair in a way. Yeah. It, it reminds me of Andy Murray, not the one through there. <laughs> like If Andy Murray had played in like Hewitt or Roddick's era, oh, yeah. he would have won. He would have been one of the most decorated tennis players of all time, but he just happened to come through as a as a... Grand Slam winning champion during Federer yeah. and during Nadal and during Djokovic. You were three of the best players to ever play. And it's it's unlucky. This Spurs side could have won any number of Premier League seasons. Any oh, number yeah, totally. of them. So how do they... Just, just not the last one or probably this one. Yeah, although, yeah. Um, so how do they turn this, this slump around? They're going to have to get a better plan B than they had against Newcastle. That's for certain... Because I watched the highlight. Do you mean slump game, game to game, or like this problem they might have right now? I think a little bit of both. I think this, you know, this is an obvious slide. You look at this. This is not, you know, a couple of games that they. It's not. The thing is, it's not like they've lost a lot of games. No. But you look and there's the results. You know, they lost. You know, I'm going. I'm going all the way back to the the, the, the 15 games we're talking about. Starts off lose lose away at Burnley. Lose at Chelsea. Draw against Arsenal. Lose at Southampton. Lose at Liverpool. You know, yes, then you, they go on and beat Palace and beat Huddersfield and then beat Man City in the Champions League. But what culture seven side could probably beat Huddersfield last season? <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you go that for? So what, how do they, how do they, <laughs> you know, turn this around? How got do they, a point then, maybe. You know, because we, we were all saying, oh, well, you know, it's, it's Liverpool or Man City, followed by Tottenham and then a, a pick, your pick of the rest. It's easy, this. The answer's really easy because short term, if they want it, like short term for this season, they just need to make sure they're putting more emphasis on the league. Like the Champions League, yes, it's great to be in it, and I know, like, I mean, we when you Castle fans, we we've been there. You can't take that for granted because no. you drop out one season when you think you're having a bit of transition, and lo and behold, we've not been back for 15, no. 16 years now. You can't take it for granted, but at the same time, you know, you need to be getting into it. And if they drop, the, if they drop out of it through the league position, mm. they never ever. It could be any number of times before they get back in. Man United won't be this yeah, bad Man, forever. Yeah. Chelsea's transfer ban will run out eventually. Arsenal can't be this bad forever. Oh, yeah, the, the top four places are going to get considerably more competitive. And as then you've got Wolves, on. teams like that who have got... Yeah, massive, Wolves, massive Leicester, massive Everton, they're yeah. throwing, you know, they, they should be in and around that kind of area. But the problem is you need to get there via the league. Now that Tottenham side, even if they're not at 100%, even if they haven't got Ericsson or whatever, they have still got one of the best sides in the league. More than enough to beat pretty much every team that's on this list. <laughs> But they they have to have their eye on it. A long term, Tottenham should probably know better than anybody what it what it takes to to do this because the last time there was these kind of question marks about where they were going direction wise, they saw Gareth Bale, and yeah. this exact Spurs side is built off the back of that transitional pe- period they went through as a result of Bale leaving. The worry about that then is that the next one in that sort of line is Harry Kane. It is. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean. 
you, well, it is. Player yeah. of his quality linked to, I mean, take your pick of the top European. But the thing is, I wouldn't even say it's just Kane because Bale had been there a long time and he was yeah. sort of what they built that side around. He was. I always used to hate them saying it was a one man team, but his, his impact was was absolutely massive. You look at like that Spurs side now. You think maybe, yeah, maybe do let Ericsson go. He needs a fresh challenge. Maybe you can't rely on Kane forever. Maybe let him go. You know, maybe your Lamellas, your players like that, like. There's a lack, maybe, of, of a hunger and a desire in that side. Vertonghen, for example, Alderweireld's had his problems with injury. You might need to just build it back up from scratch. And if you do, if you know you're going to do that, and you've still got the right manager there, I was going to say easy, that you look you look at Atletico again, and that's what that's what they is done. that the most important thing out of arguably out of everyone. The most, most most important thing is Pochettino. I would think so. Yeah. The, the, the worry is what Adam said before about talking about stability. So the start of last season. You look at them not investing at all, mm. and it looked dangerous at the time, but then they went through a run of amazing form. Mm. They didn't draw a single game. They were losing every now and then. but they, they, Well, up until Christmas, it was, yeah. was the top three, wasn't it? And it, it, wasn't looked, just it looked inspired. Say. The stability was a clever idea. But then after that, I know Daniel Levy's going to get most of the, the criticism because mm -hmm. he's the man with the purse strings and stuff, but then how, how far do you go along the line until Pochettino's the questionable point because the team he put out against Newcastle I'll, I'll go to the oh there's massive selection issues with that yeah he, it was not right at all and he, the changes he made during the game were also not right it just wasn't like it didn't feel like he had a grip of that game at all obviously there's frustrations where you've got 80% of the possession and you're not getting anything out of it mm. but it just didn't seem like there was anything there that, that there was a lot. There was a lot of Spurs just... like purely moving the ball from from left to right. Spurs are an excellent side when you kind of get a bit of space to play in. Like if you look at some of those results, some of their best performances have been against sides who they shouldn't really be picking up the points against. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, whereas you, you look at teams that sit back a bit, they kind of do struggle with that. Spurs are in a bit of um, they're not a ultra pressing side the way that like Liverpool will do to no. you or the way that Arsenal are trying to sort of work on this season. They're not like that, but at the same time, they're not like a vicious counter-attacking side that's really going to punish you. They're good at going toe-to-toe -to -toe and swinging against teams. Which is why, which is why if, you look, City, yeah. if you look at their results, Man City seem to be the team, the team they're best suited to play against because you get a bit of space, but also not too much. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. You kind of go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you outpass, you outplay. You can just, you can, you can desire your way through that. But if you take the desire out of that Tottenham side, and I hate like terms like that getting banded about, that's like, you know, talk sport level. <laughs> but, like, but you can clearly see when they kept that unit together, there was a real willingness from that team to put in the extra yards here and there to keep running, to keep chasing back, to close down balls when they needed to, regardless of tiredness or how many games they were playing or even how many goals they were losing by, as we saw with Ajax. But you cannot write off how dispiriting it must be to do all that for two or three seasons, to constantly be told, let's stay together. We've got a really good side here and just look at like look two at places the up the league and just think, oh, how have they done it? Final question. I think it's the North London derby this weekend. Mm. Um, I say I think I know because I've been eyeing up Harry Kane and uh, we're going to sub him out and I need to turn my form around in the What Culture Fancy League, which you can join still. What Culture <laughs> Fans League links everywhere. Um, is that arguably the sort of turning point? If Arsenal win that, are you looking at Arsenal as the team who are going to... It's, it's, way too, it's way too soon for any of this. I mean, it's 15 points out of 15. Is It is relegation form. If you finish the league season with 38 points, you're in a very good chance of... Go you'd be unlucky, but you could probably go down with that. So they need to literally improve their form over the last three or four months. Like so, like so many, like so many teams who actually will go down will be saying to themselves, we, but if they beat Arsenal, I don't imagine anybody will care. No, and so. uh, one other thing I suppose is, you know, yes, if, after 15 points from 15 games, you'd love to play uh, Watford right now, for example. No, no, I'm... The only team That's who twice. are this thing, yeah, I don't, I don't, burying Watford, but I don't think they is would. It, is it is it preferable to play someone like an Arsenal, like you say, an, 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 play an open football, uh, and you can game. raise yeah. yourself for that sort of occasion? I they the don't want another game like the Newcastle. The game. worst thing that could possibly happen for Spurs right now is they find themselves at the weekend against a team who've got a very structured compact defence because they really struggled with that against Newcastle. <laughs> and so this one way to the David Luiz. Yeah, <laughs> so one way you describe Arsenal, it's not with a really compact, solid defence. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, it's the, it's the kind of thing where you play two of those games back to back and that's infectious. Like, you start to think we're never going to beat anybody who yeah. has any sort of form mm. to, the, to uh, that team. Final question then. Where do you No, no, it's just the last one's the final okay. question. What's this? 
uh, final question, final question B, yeah. Um, where do they finish this season? Top four. Uh, fifth, I think. Ooh. I don't think there's... See, I think maybe next year you could be, you could be saying that, but I don't think there's... Because you've got to remember, right? Honestly, outside outside of Liverpool... Wolves are going to come fourth. Outside honestly. of Liverpool and Man City. Not with the Europa League, mate. No. They're going to do a burn. Outside <sighs> of the top four... Outside of the top two, sorry, last season. Chelsea, Man United, Tottenham, Arsenal. All basically just try to like let the others through and have those two Champions League spots. They both... All four of them tried to throw that season away. <laughs> and Tottenham were just the least bad at throwing it away. <laughs> and... I still think they are. Worst worst case scenario, I think they drop our place to fourth. But yeah. even then, even then, I can't, I, even then, are you telling me that Chelsea side are going to finish third? Right. That Man United side are going to finish third? I see, maybe. I think maybe are maybe Arsenal. I, my prediction has always been Tottenham and Arsenal making up those final two spots. Um, I still say I still say Chelsea. Still I, still, I like. I think I think that Chelsea side will get it together in the end. Well, let us know your thoughts on the future for Tottenham Hotspur in the comment section below or on Twitter at WhatCultureFC. Watch there. You can follow all three of us. You can follow Simon Gallagher at... At Cy Gallagher. You can follow Adam Cleary at... At Christian Erickson 8. <laughs> you can follow me at Adam Wilwood. You can follow us all at WhatCultureFC, as I said. Make sure you subscribe to What Culture Football for daily football podcasts. My thanks to Simon and to Adam, Christian. Uh, <laughs> and we will see you soon. <laughs>